Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Regen Community Dev Call. Uh, we'll just wait a minute or two as more people start to show up. Um, if you'd like, while we're waiting for everybody to, to join, feel free to um, either in chat or uh, pop, pop yourself off mute and just share uh, you know, who you are and where you're calling in from. <clears throat> I'm just going to take a moment to uh, make sure that uh, folks in our Discord are aware that this is happening. Um, Welcome, welcome. So uh, in today's community dev call, we will be sharing a, uh, a little bit about um, the wrap up of the test net, um, what you can look forward to um, for the March to main net and dates and uh, know stuff that's coming up and a few, a few other updates and then in a, any questions and conversations that may be happening. All right, it looks like we've got a pretty good crew here. So without further ado, I will, uh, I'll start our share. And actually, um, before I get going, uh, um, Mircha, I realize I jumped out of our last meeting and I think maybe I did not manage to copy over the um, videos that you had sent. Do you, do you mind um, just putting those into the uh, chat here? Sure thing. Thank you. All right. I'm going to share screen with everybody. All right, welcome to Region Network's Community Dev Update, uh, 10th of March. Um, we're about a month away from our planned mainnet launch. So we'll be spending uh, a fair bit of our time on today's call talking about the sort of coordination and key milestones on the way there. Um, as usual, I'll try to keep a sort of like our speaking fairly brief and uh, to, to 10 minutes or so. Um, and you'll hear from um, different folks from the, the lead validator community and the region engineering team uh, and our community team as we go through with just some updates. And then we'll open it up for dialogue and conversation. As always, please feel free to put questions in the chat and we'll try to monitor that. Also, the call is recorded. So uh, we do share this out with the broader community for people who aren't able to join uh, at this particular time slot. And we also publish and share the um, slide deck. So without further ado, we'll jump in. So uh, the Region Ledger's final incentivized test net is over, uh, wrapped up on the 8th, uh, evening of the 8th. Uh, we'll be publishing a leaderboard tomorrow that has uh, all of the points from this test net and all of the past test nets and their translation from points into region tokens. Um, that'll be published by Anil and the Vitwit team, uh, hopefully by end of day tomorrow. So uh, look, look forward to that. We'll be posting it as an announcement in the validator announcement channel. So stay tuned for that. Um, we'll also be publishing an in-depth post-mortem um, with all of the learnings and results um, by uh, next Monday. So um, by, uh, yeah, by next Monday, I guess that would be March 15th. So um, also you can look forward to that. Um, Anil, uh, would you like to share anything just on um, what we tested and what we learned here briefly? Um, um, knowing that there'll also be a more detailed report, report out to the community. Uh, yes, uh, so especially after you know testing uh, with the Stariot version, uh, we understood you know a uh, couple of uh, like validator or sentinels were going down uh, with some uh, gRPC uh, uh, request load. 
uh, especially after the uh, spam attack, the nodes were going down. So we reported that issue and that is a critical find. And yeah, similarly, we had issues with Cosmovisor because there are like a bunch of uh, logs and then the Cosmovisor was uh, taking time to understand, like uh, read all those logs and then uh, uh, keep up the uh, uh, node up, up to date. So it was like syncing was uh, really slow. And yeah, so uh, someone else also reported that issue and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, those are the critical findings, and then we tested Kazim Bazim and uh, deploying deploy a couple of smart contracts. And uh, the interesting thing is, like, we have tested the groups model, uh, which is uh, available only on region ledger for now, uh, which will be ported to Cosmos SDK later. And yeah, we have some cool features uh, in the groups model, and then I think. Uh, everyone got a good understanding of uh, groups uh, module and how to use that for any organization and that hierarchy. Yeah, so it was a fantastic experience. And yeah, so the community was pretty active and they were like uh, sharing guides, blog posts. And yep, it was a great experience. So far. Cool. Yeah. And we'll try to sort of collate all of the resources that were community generated and uh, have those all in one place and in, in the postmortem and again have the leaderboard and details and documentation of, you know, the testing results as Anil has been sharing and uh, yeah, that that stuff all should be available on on Monday for everybody to to um, go over. Cool. So. Um, um, <clears throat> So we have a uh, target genesis date. Uh, let me just, I didn't, uh, I was busy up until the time of the call. So I actually didn't um, put it in here. So uh, here's our um, mainnet launch timeline. Um, our target uh, genesis date for mainnet launch is Thursday, April 8th. So, um, That'll, that's going to go into the community calendar, which if you haven't already signed up, there uh, there's a link here in the um, in our presentation. Um, I just to find my way back to that. Apologies. There we go. Um, too many tabs open. So um, uh, April eighth, we're shooting to launch mainnet. Obviously, there's a little bit of testing before now and then. I just want to sort of briefly go over this uh, timeline with everybody. Um, again, we'll be publishing this um, right after the call um, later today, so everybody will sort of be able to do that, and we're we'll be putting all the key dates in the calendar. Obviously, disclaimer, all of this is subject to sort of like the key milestones that we're working on as a community to audit and test and like bring together the Genesis file. And there are different moments in which some of this stuff may get extended. We're not creating any new software. We're not, you know, uh, in, unless some big um, security issue was to be brought up, we won't be changing anything. This is more about auditing the token distribution, uh, giving everybody a chance to view the candidate um, of the Genesis file and participate in that and sort of like slowly moving through a process of uh, seeing the candidate and then launching it as our main net. So with that all said, you can just sort of see we're in the middle of um, finalizing the, the, the distribution, like calculation and distribution of the incentive uh, rewards for people who've contributed to helping uh, build region network, build and launch region network as validators. Um, that's all, uh, yeah, wrapping up right now. So um, if you're a validator and have been participating, you know, please do make sure to generate your address uh, and, and get that into us so that it can be registered and you know, we can kind of go through that whole process. Um, another key date here is we'll be um, opening our Gen, T, uh, Gen TXs uh, for a community um, sort of community run um, candidate of the mainnet, which will have the full sort of um, 
token distribution and allocation so that everybody can audit that, have a look through it, make sure that your personal allocations match, make sure that other sort of like in important allocations to the foundation, to, you know, R&D Incorporated, et cetera, all match, you know, and that, that all is clear. So that'll be up and running. Uh, that'll get launched on the 25th of March and be kept running up until just before we launch mainnet. So there'll be opportunities for sort of feedback and just if anything needs to change or people need to flag something, that's the time period. So up until then, everything's building up. We're sort of co collating, coalescing, ensuring that everything is there to be baked into that Genesis file. So um, the GenTX uh, submission for mainnet is going to close on April 6th. So as, a, as you know, validators uh, and community members who are planning on helping launch the network together, uh, please attend to that. And also um, we'll be again, publishing a little bit more information about this, but on Thursday, April 8th, we will be um, having a live launch party. So we'll launch this all together live. That's gonna be uh, co-hosted by uh, R&D Incorporated, Region Foundation, and our lead validators and, and, and hopefully other community members will be participating as well. So we'll have a little bit of a, you know, just like retrospective and, and where we've come from. We'll also, you know, watch the chain come up together on the Explorer. Um, and yeah, just sort of in the, the Cosmos tradition of <laughs> launching the network live, we'll just be live streaming as it all kind of happens. So uh, that's kind of the overview for now. Um, again, some of this may be subject to change pending how things happen, but I think we feel pretty confident that this is, uh, you know, this is this is the process and um, schedule for moving towards mainnet launch. So um, I'm going to just pause really briefly to see if uh, there's questions or comments. That was a sort of like a dense overview of information, um, or any additions from um, Anil or Corey or Mircha or Dan or anybody else who's sort of you know deep in the process here. Okay, great. Uh, so just, uh, I think probably everybody in the community knows this, but the private sale is over. Um, we're still wrapping up a couple of, um, of the, the contracts and, and again, sort of bundling all that into Genesis. So we'll have the final results of the private sale round that we're just finishing up available for the community next week. When, when we sort of have everything finished up, but we're all really happy with how that went. Um, like it's, it's gonna get us off to a good start for helping uh, build this uh, community together. Um, if you're interested and you, you know, you didn't make it into that round, you can still go to region.network slash invest and, you know, get on a whitelist for um, future rounds and, you know, and just signal interest in the public sale if you want. We've been getting lots of interest still, which is, which is great, um, but we did close because we got to bundle everything up for this Genesis file and get this uh, blockchain launched. So um, yeah, it's all very exciting. Um, as always, you can go to the public notion roadmap here, uh, just showing you all uh, really quickly. You can see what's happening in region ledger, our work in the Cosmos SDK, what's ha happening with the registry, which is sort of the, the front end of how people interact with buying and selling and credits. Uh, what's happening with our fantastic science team, which was really the team underpinning our success in helping bring credits to market and, and uh, sell credits to Microsoft, and what's going on with Open Team, which is a really important initiative funded by the USDA, which we're instrumental in building Web3 infrastructure for ecological claims and assets. So lots of exciting stuff happening. You can always check in with that uh, here in the Notion document. So. Um, uh, this again, all of this will be published. Um, I'll I'll make this publicly available and share this on all our channels. But uh, you can link to the Google Calendar, which has all of the key sort of um, upcoming events on the March to Mainnet. So if you're uh, planning on being a, a Mainnet validator, it's probably useful to get that in your calendar so that you can just keep on track. Um, and uh, with that, um, we're doing these calls weekly um in our march through mainnet and probably for a little while afterwards just to keep everybody on the same page there's a lot of information to share and it's good to just keep it keep the momentum up so um 
looking forward to chatting with everybody uh, again next Wednesday. With that, I'll uh, stop my share and um, yeah, just open it up for questions, comments. Um, yeah, just curious to hear uh, from, from the community. I have a couple questions, Gregory, or just a few. Hey there, how's it going? Daniel. <laughs> good, to see, good to see you all. Nice to be here. Uh, I'm curious. I know this is this. You know, there's a lot of focus on just bringing the chain up and getting the Gen T X and all that kind of stuff, just right. And and it's a lot of work. And you guys are doing an amazing job. And this is so. This may be a little bit further out, but like, I'm curious when you know um, t t the, the issuance of eco credits, the the of, of credit classes, these kinds of things. Yep. Um, I've just been thinking, been, been talking with some other folks about that and kind of, you know, um, is, is any of that, is, is there any, could, could you say just a few words about that? Maybe not to get into too many details, but yeah, because it's a Yeah, great, yeah. great question. Yes, I had intended on um, talking through that a little bit more. And again, this is like, we're working on a sort of like thorough, some thorough, more thorough documentation of all of this, but um, uh, this is a great venue to get some of this information out. So um, we'll be launching mainnet without the credit module enabled. Um, um, mainnet will also be uh, launched without transactions enabled. So there'll be a number, the first month after mainnet, the commute, we're going to be asking the community to be quite engaged with governing this public blockchain together. So what the first thing we want is for people for, you know, we're essentially going to have a, uh, a formal process to upgrade the chain to enable transactions, upgrade the chain to enable the credit module functionality, um, upgrade the chain to enable the ecological data functionality, sort of, you know, how, how the stateful representation of ecological data that underpins uh, certifying uh, and verifying a credit, um, upgrading, actually, maybe even preceding those two modules is the groups module, which is, you know, this sort of cutting edge uh, governance uh, and key management module, which we're very excited about. So all of these core uh, um, functions we're going to be upgrading into as a community, uh, hopefully in the first, you know, month or six weeks of the chain's existence. And so there'll be a lot of activity. Um, we're going to be standing up the right forums and ways of engaging to sort of like participate in, in contributing to governance proposals and all the rest of that. So there's going to be a lot of bustling activity around sort of uh, the community governing the, this public protocol together. So um, once the credit module, once that functionality is all kind of like up and on chain, which I would say the, the earliest, I would say the, the full package of what we consider sort of the minimum viable sort of ecological ledger, uh, which is the vision here is probably about six weeks from uh, wow. launch, just because it's gonna take, we're gonna have successive proposals, proposals take a little bit of time. We're gonna be asking people to engage with vetting and understanding what is happening and sort of like moving through that process together. So once that's all up and running, and again, like that's the soonest, it may take a little bit longer than that. Then, you know, there will be full functionality for people to be able to create and issue new credit classes. Um, we're working on uh, simultaneously, there's a lot of work happening over on the registry side. You can go and look at the credit class and methodology guides that are published right now on region uh, Network's website. So, you know, best if you'd like to be bringing a class, a new credit class into existence to help uh, two sides of the marketplace. It, it, that's a good place to start is understanding sort of the guidance, credit class development guidance from region registries perspective, mm -hmm. um, just to have quality standards. Uh, people can also choose different approaches than that, but that I think that's sort of the, the best bet at this stage. Um, so yeah, I'll take a pause and just see. A, does that answer your question, Daniel? Do you have follow-up questions or you know ideas for us about all that? 
That sounds great, Gregory. Yeah, I'm. Um, and six weeks sounds aggressive. Sounds like I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Um, we'll see. I mean, I mean, that's things. not a promise. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Little, I recognize that. I think it's a great. It's a great. Uh, I mean, it, I think it's really smart to bring up these modules one by one and to you know make sure that they're working properly. And and so it's it sounds like a really great plan and really well thought out. Um, and. Um, and yeah, bringing the credit classes online. Yeah, I'm curious to see. I haven't actually followed up with the registry side of things, and I didn't know that those resources existed. So I'm curious to check those out. And and um, and for anybody else on the call who's interested in um, issuing new credit classes and that sort of thing, I'd love to kind of compare notes as as you know, um, and just create you know, I don't know, talk with others who are interested in that and just explore um, what's possible. Yeah. Great. So I'll just, uh, just while we're here, you can go to uh, uh, region.network slash resources and you can see the region registry yes. guide. So you can see, you know, there's project developers 101, you know, this is how to develop and list a project on region registry. Um, standards that define requirements for project registration and credit issuance. Um, there's templates for project developers, you know, and um, so that's all really useful if, if, if you're as a developer, if you're planning on um, developing a credit class that you'd like to be sort of, you know, and just to be clear, region registry is essentially like a curation, a curated registry of credits on running on the public blockchain. Um, we are working on governance integration between the registry and the blockchain. But again, that's going to be something that happens through a community process. But for now, that's a great place to just you know, uh, if you want to be sure to sort of be meeting the quality thresholds and have a saleable credit and be engaging stakeholders, there's a bunch of really fantastic materials that have been put together there that you can follow. Um, um, I'm just thinking, oh, um, Corey, would you mind uh, just putting a uh, link to the GitHub documentation around sort of the mod the checklist for modules to be considered sort of like ready to go for region ledger from the region engineering team's perspective i think that's you know and just sort of like the formal process that we're trying to implement around sort of like the safety security and functionality of modules that that the community can sort of like up choose to upgrade onto the network there's you know, sort of a proposed uh, checklist around that that has been uh, published on GitHub. Uh, Corey just put it into the um, the chat. Yeah, here. I just I've linked the one from the groups module. We are actually in the process of of updating this, and even on our on our dev call from earlier this morning, um, decided that there's a little bit of cleanup to be done here, more just in the 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 ironing out and defining what parts of this happen and how they correspond with certain parts in the release process. So the idea here is that like, this is a checklist that after development, you know, we do some internal audits and audits with other core developers from the, the Cosmos SDK, um, like kind of community of modules that are either being, you know, released through the SDK process or, you know, that we will be taking care of uh, directly on region ledger for modules that we're, that we're releasing on our main net. And um, yeah, the upgrades that still have yet to happen here is kind of a delineation of which of these checklist items are things that would be expected to happen before an initial release candidate is tagged, um, which one of these would be expected to be happening after a release candidate is tagged. And therefore these are kind of a checklist of items to do after a first RC comes out. Um, so those kind of upgrades are still to come. It'll probably be actually as a um, as a pull request onto the Cosmos SDK repo itself, because I think we're wanting to engage the larger SDK um, contributors um, in that in that process and make sure that it's not something that Regen is just doing in isolation. But yeah, th th this is the kind of criteria that we're planning on walking through for each of these modules in as we um, like as we move towards getting them listed on mainnet. Thanks, Corey. Um, and contributions welcome, as Corey said, uh, wanting to sort of, you know, combine and integrate with sort of uh, an emerging set of sort of standards for safety and governance processes with the larger ecosystem that we're part of. So um, 
Yeah, we've got about five minutes left. Um, other uh, questions, contributions, or comments? Uh, anything is welcome. It doesn't have to be technical. If people have larger, like, you know, questions about things that are moving in the ecosystem, there's been a lot happening <laughs> the last little bit with, uh, you know, there's lots of stuff. So, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, just about mainnet or, you know, validator concerns or anything like that. So. All right, so I, I did want to just flag uh, while we have everybody's attention, one more thing that I wanted to make sure to, to cover. And uh, again, um, Corey, um, maybe you could speak briefly to this. Um, just if uh, we've sent out instructions for uh, address generation, um, those instructions did not cover if you choose to use a multi-sig uh, for managing your funds because your institutional or running a validator um, in such a way as you'd like to have a multi-sig. So Corey, do you, do you mind just speaking to that very briefly here for everybody and, you know, let people know what, uh, what it looks like right now and what steps need to be taken and on what timeline if people want to either swap out their registration, their registered address for one that's multi-sig set up or have that be the first address that they register? You wanna to speak to that? Yeah, I mean, the, sh the short of it is our, our deadline for having all of our addresses um, for, for Genesis purposes is still March 18th. So that's gonna be coming up in just over a week. So that's the, like, basically, if you need to update your, your wallet address between now and then, that is okay. I would make sure that you're in communication with someone from our team if you have submitted that form twice, just to make sure that we're knowing to pick the right one, which will probably be the most recent, but we're also trying to make sure that, you know, there isn't impersonations going on here. So it's, it's it, while, while we do have procedures in place, like the photo that we're requesting from everyone to do ad additional identity verification, if you're submitting multiple forms, um, just make sure that you're in contact directly with someone from our team as well. And in terms of how to actually generate a multi-sig address, that's going to require you, you know, I'm assuming that if you're interested in doing that, you're already well aware of how Cosmos multi-sig addresses work. Um, and you know, you're probably thinking this is something that would have to be done with the Regen CLI and not through the Kepler processes we've illustrated um, in, the, in the instructions via the email that we've sent out. That's a 100% accurate read. So you would need to do this through the, the Regen command line interface directly. Um, the one thing that I wanna make sure people are aware of as we've communicated a little bit in these emails our, um, our address format actually changed in the last weeks of the testnet cycle. And so if you've been using a regen binary um, for your command line interface from one of the previous testnet cycles, you probably have your, on your addresses will notice that there is a colon, it's regen colon in the base 32 prefix. That is not going to be a valid address for our mainnet. Um, we've decided to remove the colon from our base 32 prefix. And so in order to be generating a multi-sig address or any address through the CLI, if for some reason or another, you're not wanting to um, use Kepler at all for even a single, well, a single user wallet address, um, just make sure that you have the most recent version of the regen binary. We do have a, um, a release candidate for regen ledger 1.0 tagged as a pre-release and you're welcome to use that. That version should have the correct address format. So that's, that's the basic take home there is if you're doing any more fancier address generation, um, we're assuming that you kind of have a sense of what you're doing uh, when it comes to generating multi-sig addresses, but just make sure that you're using the 1.0 release candidate of regen ledger and not one of the previous um, binary versions from the test nets. Cool. Thanks, Corey. So just, just to clarify that, if we do generate a multi-sig address, we should resubmit it through the original process and make sure we speak to someone so that you know that we resubmit it and which one is the one that we want to be used, right? Correct. Yes, please. Thanks for clarifying. And in terms of uh, Mircha and the informal team generating 
clarity for all of us uh, and supporting things. I, I also wanted to just take a quick, I know we're running up to time. So, you know, people, you're welcome to uh, hop off here, but Mircha and the, and the informal team have been kind enough to start uh, producing some little sort of tutorial videos for validator sort of 101 uh, best practices um, for, because uh, yeah, we want to be able to onboard high quality validators for s some of our uh, validators are, you know, old hands at all of this and have been around the ecosystem for a long time. Some are new. So we just want to have level setting materials. So informal has been kind enough to create a videos. I, I put them in the, the slideshow here, Mircha and the team will be sharing those into the validator channel. And, you know, um, this will also make its way into, a, you know, hopefully a couple different sort of uh, doc, docs, uh, constellations and wikis and places so people can uh, get access to this information. So um, thank you, Mircha, for putting, helping put some of this together with the informal team. It's our pleasure. And there'll be, these are just the first two, like I said, we're releasing them as we make them. So there'll be a couple of more. And again, it just covers very basic things that most old, older validators will already be very versed in. Cool. Thank you. Um, Victor, hola. I see you. I see you on. Nice to see you. Um, Hello. Happy to be here. Hello, everyone. Uh, do you have any uh, questions or, or comments or anything? How many validators for launch? Uh, we'll be, uh, there'll be 50 active validator seats. Nice. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so thank we you. had uh, a little over, I think we had, a, you know, we had 125 seats available for this last test net that we ran. Um, last time I looked before we ran the test net, uh, there was, uh, I think about 40 validators were jailed. <laughs> but we had 80, 88 or something who were active, uh, you know, still through the whole incentivized test net which is great. And uh, yeah, so we'll be launching with 50 active seats. And uh, yeah. Um, exciting times coming. Yeah, it's very exciting. We're looking forward to it. So um, fantastic. Well, we're up over the top of the hour. So unless there's burning questions, um, I want to just respect everybody's time. Um, feel free to ask questions about testnet uh, stuff, well, testnet wrap up, uh, et cetera, and, and mainnet in the validator channel in Discord. We try to do everything over there. If you've got questions about address generation, um, you can do it in the wallet support channel. Um, if, uh, if you have questions or want to discuss uh, multi sig setup, et cetera, um, I, I would probably do that in the validator channel. Um, there's a, I know there's a number of different people here who are gonna be setting up multi-sig so people can chatter about that and just support each other. If that sounds like it's important to you but you don't quite know how to do it, <laughs> reach out and we can get support. I think Corey's also planning on putting together a little bit of, a, of some, some docs or pull from existing docs. So um, yeah, without further ado, I'll let you all go on to the rest of your evenings or, or mornings or days, wherever you are calling in from. And yeah, thanks a lot for joining us for the community call here at Region Network and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, next week and in the interwebs. Um, see y'all later. See you next one. Bye-bye.